Hello and welcome to Infinity. Today we're going to talk more about colour. And it's useful to know and understand some of this, but we're doing a little bit at a time. And then we're going to, in the next step, we're going to be applying that knowledge and understanding and show how it's used with photos. So when we think of colour, we typically think of a rainbow, where you've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Why indigo violet? Why not just purple? It was because Isaac Newton, who dreamed up this, thought the number seven was kind of magical. And he had to have seven colours. But there you go. So what we're going to look at really now is we're going to go to the next one, where on the computer what you've actually got is red, green and blue. That's all you've got and everything else is a combination of it. But we can actually start to combine these now in useful ways. And if we bring in the next three colours here, red, green and blue are called the primary colours, these three are called secondary colours. And they are when we combine the two. So if I get the pipette here, I can go into magenta there and you can see that red is 255, which is the maximum, green is zero, and blue is 255, which is the maximum. And similarly over here, yellow, because red and green are at the maximum, blue is the minimum. What's important here is, and this is used a lot in colour and also colour schemes, is that you have opposites here. So red and cyan are opposite. Cyan is made up of blue and green, but no red. And the opposite red is all red, but no blue and green. And these turn out into some interesting ways of using colour and the way that it appears. You should be able to talk about red, green and blue, and also cyan, magenta and yellow. The way that we the way to remember this, if you've got red, green and blue on one hand, and cyan, magenta, yellow there, so this is R, G, B, C, M, Y, and they fit together. So R and C are the same. You know, they're one and the opposite. Blue and yellow are opposites. Green and magenta are opposites. It's worth remembering that. You can actually fill in more of this if you bring in the colours in between here. So, for example, red goes to orange, where red is now still its maximum of 255, but green is starting to come in. It's half as much green to make orange and so on. And so you start splitting up the colours, combining them in different ways, and what you get is a complete circle here. And what this is often colour called is the colour wheel. If you kept doing it all the time, you get something like this. And it was the colours smoothly turned from one to the other. But you can still see there the red, you know, through the orange into the yellow, through down to the green, the cyan, the blue, and the magenta. This wheel is sometimes shown at different angles and so on, but it's the basic thing to recognise this and say, ah, it's a colour wheel and, and so on. What you can do with colour wheels as well is... You can go from the outside, you can have the pure colour, but as you go in, it changes. So down here, it moves towards white. Here it moves towards black, and here it moves in towards grey. And it's interesting to look at what's really, really happening here. Because if you can remember and think in red, green and blue terms, you can understand colours more. So here, right at the outside, red is at its maximum, green and blue are pretty much zero. And as you go in... Look what's happening to green and blue. They're both coming out pretty much together. Red doesn't change. Red is still its maximum. And it comes up. So blue, green and blue, as you go towards white, are coming up. So they will come up to the maximum You're right when you're right in the middle. So it's green and blue coming up as you go to white. Now then, let's have a look at what happens with going from here, going towards black. Now green and blue, I'll start off again at the minimum. As you go towards black now, Green and blue don't really change. It's the red that comes down. Because when they're all zero, you've got no light at all and it's black. And then when you go up here to greys, what's going to happen? It's a combination of those. Red comes down, but green and blue go up. And so this, when it's grey, they're all the same, but they're all in the middle together. So it sort of squeezes them in. So when you look then at a picture you start to look at what those combinations and colours are. So we look up into the sky, you'll often find there that green and blue are the highest because you've got more, a lot of cyan in. 
the sky. It's not just blue. And you've got red in there as well. And when you look down at leaves and green leaves here, you'll get red and green are high because and, and blue is somewhat lower. So you've got more yellow in leaves. The dark leaves, when you get them here, you'll get red and, and green and blue are fairly similar there, but blue and green tend to be a little bit higher because you're getting a bit more cyan into those. And, and so on. And even when you get through to people, so humans, you can see that red is the dominant colour there for a Caucasian skin. And the way that you're going to control colours is related directly to this. So with that understanding of colour, we're going to move forward in the next picture and talk about how we change it.